Good morning, everyone. We're continuing our series today looking at God's people. In the recent past at YCC, we've asked the question together, who am I as a Christian? How does God see me? And we've learned that as we start to see ourselves from God's perspective. The result is transformation, new purpose in our lives and spiritual growth. Well, in this series, we're asking the same question about God's people. So who are we as the church? How does God see us? And as we catch a glimpse from God's perspective, we believe the result will be the same. Transformation, new purpose and growth for YCC. At the outset, Mark explained that the church is God's building. We are his dwelling place here on earth. And we have an awesome and exciting responsibility to carry his presence into the world around us. Last week, Simon underlined our identity as believers, people who enjoy a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And today, we are turning to another key picture of the church from the pages of the New Testament. We are the body of Christ. Before I unpack this picture, I want to say that it can be hard to view our faith in corporate terms, perhaps because the society around us is so individualistic. In 2017, a major survey conducted by the European Commission found that the UK is the most individualistic country in Europe. As a nation, we love to go our own way. And sadly, I sometimes feel that this way of thinking can seep into our Christian faith too. As evangelicals, we tend to emphasise our personal testimony and many of our worship songs and prayers are sung and spoken in the first person. Now, all of this is gloriously true. Each of us can have a one to one intimate relationship with our Father in heaven. And if you're watching today and you don't yet have a living relationship with Jesus Christ, I would urge you to go to the homepage of our website www.yorkcommunitychurch.co.uk and investigate the life booklet written by our pastor Simon Rennie. This free resource will explain how you can begin a life-changing friendship with Jesus Christ today. But the truth is the good news doesn't stop there. The fact is that God has created each of us for community, for family, and God's heart for you and me is that we live out our faith in the context of his church, his people. One of the most beautiful images used by the writers of the Bible to convey God's community is the body of Christ. In Ephesians 1, the Apostle Paul describes the church as Christ's body, with Jesus himself as the head. Jesus is at the helm and we are his hands, his feet, his eyes and ears, his heart, reaching out to the world around us. In Romans 12, Paul writes that, just like a human body, all the individual members of the church belong to each other. We need each other. We weren't designed to work out our faith on our own. Famously, in 1 Corinthians 12, Paul teaches that every single member of the body you and me, has each been given specific gifts and abilities for the common good. And last, my favourite picture of the body of Christ sits in Ephesians chapter 4, where Paul writes these words. Under God's control, all the different parts of the body fit together, and the whole body is held together by every joint with which it is provided. So when each separate part works as it should, the whole body grows and builds itself up through love. I just love this image of the whole body, the whole church, growing up together in love as we all play our part. And in fact, we find a very similar picture earlier on in Ephesians, when Paul writes that each of us is God's masterpiece and that he created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. 
Now we usually read these verses through the lens of our personal walk with God, but they can just as easily apply to the church. We are God's masterpiece, a beautiful painting or mosaic, and every individual Christian features in the picture. You all have a role to play. Now in my hands I have here a tiny piece of coloured plastic called a hammer bead and my own daughter loves to play and create with these. As you can imagine they get everywhere and I have to assure you that there are few household injuries more painful than stepping on a hammer bead in your bare feet. Now following a pattern you place hundreds of these hammer beads together to create a mosaic picture like the examples I've put on the PowerPoint. On its own, this single hammer bead might appear tiny, insignificant, in many ways useless, but placed alongside its friends in a mosaic, it becomes part of a beautiful picture. In the same way, we might feel pretty inadequate, but when we put together with our brothers and sisters in the church, a masterpiece is created and if one of these hammer beads was missing, then the picture would be incomplete. And in the same way, the church only works properly when we are all in place, bringing glory to God and playing our part. I'm now going to draw out two important implications from all of this. And then I'm going to ask you two questions to finish. The first implication for us today is that we in YCC belong to each other. Christianity isn't for lone wolves. We need each other. I love Paul's words in 1 Corinthians 12 when he's talking about the body of Christ. He writes, There should be no division in the body. Its part should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. God's heart for us as a church, as a body, as a family, is that we should be one, walking through the good times and the bad times together. Right now, here in the UK, we are about to enter a really uncertain time as the lockdown gradually lifts. Each of us will find ourselves on different pages according to our different circumstances. Some of us will be returning to work, while others remain in isolation. Some will be busier than ever. Others will still be relatively unoccupied. In a sense, it was easier to be together when the stricter lockdown measures were in place, because we were all on a similar page, excepting our brave frontline workers, of course. As we enter into this next phase, as a church, we need to bear with one another in love and make every effort to be gracious to each other, whatever our different circumstances. We all need to guard our hearts against division and remember that we are one in Christ and he holds us together no matter what. The second implication I want to draw out from this sermon today is that being part of a church is just as much about what we can give as it is about what we can receive. In our society, we are used to sitting back, getting out the popcorn and being entertained by people. And against this backdrop, it's tempting to see church as another spectator sport. This has been a particular challenge in lockdown, when our church meetings are literally on our TV screens. Church too easily becomes about what I can get out of it, rather than what I can give. We sometimes become critical of what we see, and we can complain when what is offered up doesn't meet our needs. When we fall into this unhelpful mindset, God longs for us to remember that we are a body. Our focus needs to be on the rest of the church. Jesus came to give his life away and serve other people. We follow in his footsteps, so we should do the same. I want to finish today by asking two questions for us all to consider before God. 
Many have said that the lockdown has given us the opportunity to reflect upon our own faith. But usually the challenge has been to think about our own walk with God. Today I want us to reflect on our church, on YCC. The first question I want to ask is, where do you fit into the picture? It's exciting to think that God has designed a role specifically for you. A role that only you can fulfil. And your focus needs to be on building up the other members of the church. And remember that this doesn't have to be an outwardly impressive role. Not all of us are called to lead the team, to be up front, to stand on the stage. As Paul reminds us, every part of the human body is important, including the smaller parts. So it is with the church. So take some time out, seek God's presence and think about this question. Where do you fit into the picture? Perhaps God will call you into something new. Perhaps he will confirm you in what you're already doing. But seek his will for your church life. And it's important to add that if you are not a regular attendee of YCC or any other church, perhaps God is asking you today to consider becoming more involved in the life of a congregation. The second question I want to ask is, who can you reach out to today? We've learned that we are part of Christ's body. We need each other. And frankly, a big part of the call of God on all our lives is to care for the people around us. But so often we miss this because we're so wrapped up in ourselves. So consider those people that God has placed close to you in your life. It doesn't have to be a part of the church. It could be a family member or a colleague. But it might also be someone in your home group, somebody on the fringes of the church, or someone who God has placed alongside you in a team in the church. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal who he would like you to contact and support this week. To finish, I want to return to Paul's beautiful words in Ephesians chapter 4. Under God's control, all the different parts of the body fit together. And the whole body is held together by every joint with which it is provided. So when each separate part works as it should, the whole body grows up and builds itself up through love. I'm going to pray to finish uh, and I'd like to invite you to join me. Let's pray. Lord, as your church, as YCC, we long to grow up into everything that you have for us. We long, Lord, to do what you have called us to do. Please show each of us the part that you want us to play. Show us where we fit into your masterpiece, Lord. And show us as well who you want us to reach out to this week. We long to carry your grace, your love, your support to each other. And we want to love one another as you have loved us first in Christ. Amen.